on, just lift those hands real quick. We, uh, we've got some work to do tonight in the spirit. And um, it is appropriate to allow the image of God to be what focuses us for what happens for the next several moments. Uh, just lift those hands for a minute. Obey me. Father, we set our eyes on you and um, on your work, your word, your voice, your will, your way, and your plan. Empty us now of whatever is in the way of your word and let it come like a wrecking ball to bring down whatever defies what you've got planned for our destiny. May anticipation fill us as we focus on you for what you're saying next. In the strong name of Jesus, tonight we extol you, knowing that because of what you did on Calvary, we cannot be defeated. We give your name the praise now that your word is going to take years off of our story and extend our days tonight. Now my rule is I'm only preaching to praisers and so I want to hear those of you that feel like God is about to make you old by this word tonight. I can't hear you. I Come on, I've been waiting on it to sound like all nations all night. We got to align this atmosphere. God is coming to extend the days of the saints. Come on, shout Zion. Come on, shout for a little bit. Come on, just in case you don't get it at the end, get it right now. I give you glory for your word. Hey, hey, I said I give you glory for your word. I give you glory for your word. Come on, it's not house and car tonight. It is the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Come on, I wouldn't trust a friend that couldn't shout out the word. Paul here itself. Praise him for the word of God. Because it heals glory. It delivers glory to God. It transforms. Come on, it's the word today. It's the word today. Ah, it's the word today. He sent his word. Come on, church. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I said it's coming to you. I know you've been asking God what's next. And I've got a word from the Lord. But I just want to know if there are any lovers of the word of God in the room. Uh, his word is a hammer and a fire. And he's coming tonight to do something for you. All right. Uh, before we take our seats, it's preaching time. I want to hear the thunderous ovation of those of you that have watched uh, the ministry, the hand of God through the friends and your gratitude. I often say good leadership is not common. It is not a common thing. And in the African-American tradition, please forgive me others, but in our tradition, we mistake good leadership for good oration. And there's a lot of people that preach well and lead poor. They are not the same. What we have in our midst are good leaders that value the word of God. I want to hear. Come on, Atlanta and Charlotte, I want to hear you. Come on, for the grace, for the grace. If you go to All Nations Atlanta and ain't clapping, somebody slap them upside the head right now. Slap them. We honor our leaders. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's preaching time. And um, I have a word that the Lord gave me uh, for this particular event. I am without words. I do not think it's fair. I am ghetto, so I do not enjoy crying in front of people. And I feel completely assaulted, I'll have you know, uh, by the demonstration and the display of the friendlets. But I must say, it is the joy of my life. I've been mantled to manage mega gifts. And uh, it is the joy of my life to carry the weight of these assignments and purposes upon my prayer life. So my vow to all of you that call this movement home is that I won't ever stand against God, but I'll always bow before him. And that is my leadership strategy. So I love you. Thank you so very much. And lately, I'm going to definitely hit that cash app. And God is worthy. All right. Thank you, Tim. They're sleepy tonight, so I've got to yell. Uh, I'm preaching to praisers tonight a very interesting word that the Lord gave me that I've never preached before and uh, we're coming from Luke's gospel uh, the 13th verse 
Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, okay? And uh, I'm only going to preach one verse, but I'm going to connect it throughout the summation of the Holy Word of God. We're going to Luke chapter 13. If you see Genesis and or Exodus, you are certainly uh, in the wrong direction of the book. Praise the name of the Lord. I'd like to hear those of you that have an iPhone scream at me. Okay. The others don't get an opportunity. <laughs> I know you got it first. Luke 13, verse 31 and 32. Luke 13, 31. The same day. There came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, get thee out of here, uh, depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. They were obviously certain of it. 32 is our text. Jesus said unto them, go and tell that fox, behold, I cast out devils. And do cures today, and then I'm going to do it tomorrow. And then the third day, I will be perfected. Father, help me to preach this in Jesus' name. Just for the sake of note-taking, I'm calling this a message for the fox. I have a word for the fox. I so enjoy the word of God and its design and its construction and how the Bible writers have provided us not with just allegory but very specific implication on the necessity of anatomy. And what that means is that the way things are designed are for very specific reason. In the book of Eden, we are led to understand God's very deliberate choice of human beings, but his also addition and addendum to their relationship towards creeping things. He tells us in Genesis 1 and 2 uh, that a part of the destiny of the human race was to govern the fowl of the air and uh, to govern the thing that is in the sea everything upon it uh, so whether or not you are a creationist or an evolutionist I don't want to argue with you about whether Barney and Baby Bop are our predecessors but I will tell you that creatures have been here as long as we have say yes and uh, these are creatures that exist uh, in several spheres those that make the sky their home those that make the grass their home and there are even those that make their abode in the dirt that that is under the earth and I enjoy the scriptures information uh, about what these things do and what they mean to us stay with me Jesus is a master teacher uh, if you don't believe that you are not a Christian uh, and when we look at him we don't just look at him for our redemption but we also look at him for example and exemplar on what it means to open up the realities of the kingdom you pray with me yet and uh, he uses what we call uh, parables to give us contrast of earthly truths that are related to spiritual realities but he reduces them to example for us to comprehend and uh, in order to substantiate the significance and the weight of verse 32 I've got to reference several other examples when Jesus called a human being an animal uh, first of all a part of what we find out in Luke chapter 10 verse verse 19 that the Bible says that one Jesus guaranteed the apostles that as you're going out on this assignment behold I give unto you power and uh, this is not going to be uh, 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 any kind of power we're not talking about electricity but the kind of power I'm giving you listen is to tread watch me upon serpents and upon scorpion I'll get there and then the next verse says and over all the powers of the enemy I don't shout there I shout here and nothing hallelujah shall by any means harm you then again in Mark's gospel the 16th chapter in the 16th through the 18th verse he tells him again he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved and whoever believeth not shall be damned in my name they will cast out devils sign number one then they will speak with new
new tongues in this sign number two and then he gets to this part he say if they take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it will not harm them at all then in the book of Matthew while instructing his disciples concerning the use and the value of precious wisdom he tells them do not waste your pearls before the swine he tells him if you give your pearls to swine because they do not have distinctive appetite them pigs eat shoes and shirts and paper and mud just like those of you that don't have a specific diet for your destiny and you eat whatever is offered to you he tells them do not offer them your pearls because your pearl watch had to be cultivated over years of anguish I love your word pain tears and what you're doing now is you're offering what costs you to people who can't appreciate what you almost died to love don't you give your pearl I feel a chill in here don't you give your pearls to the swine if you turn your pearls to the swine then they not only are going to not respect it watch me but they got the unmitigated gall to turn and attack you have you ever tried to teach somebody something invest somebody something I don't understand why in 2020 we're using what people taught us to attack them it's the assignment of the pearl and the pig So that you don't miss the mystery, the psalmist writes in Psalms 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place, I'll preach to myself, shall abide in the shadow of the almighty. He goes through several devotional applications and implications. But where I get excited is when he says, surely he will deliver you. I could run through here. From the noisome pestilence and the snare of the fowler. These are animal categories and idioms and terms. When we get now to our text, there's a couple of principles you got to understand if you go here. And uh, you got to understand that as long as you are healing people, the devil is going to try to kill those that heal. If he ain't trying to kill you, it's because you're not trying to heal nobody. I know you don't want, but, but those of us that walk under the mantle of restoration have a target on our back forever. He's not attacking you because you might be on the same team. Once upon a time, sit down, I'll tell you what's that. There was a man by the name of Samson. Samson moved in unusual strength. It was not a strength that could be mustered up for muscularity. It was not a thing that could come from push-ups and keto. This level of strength came upon him because he made a vow to the Lord. I need 30 of you. That means that there are certain commitments that you make before God that can change your muscularity. When you promise I'm going to live a certain way, it translates into your blood cells. God, I love your word. It translates into your spine, into your hips, into your biceps. Why? That vow changes you to live up to what you can committed to do in God oh Samson Samson was a Nazarite he was a long head man he refused to compromise didn't want to live like the other folk around him he would wake up and he would stay away from strong drink he protected his sobriety and the Bible said that one day while he was in a field stay with me uh, he came to bring vengeance upon an opposing army and after he got done killing everybody that needed to die the Bible said he was not going to leave without giving them a sign what he did was go through there and find all the foxes he could find and he started to tie together the tails of the foxes I love his precious word and what he did was he left it on the outside of the city because what Samson was communicating is uh, big or small uh, if and when you oppose the God of Israel uh, I will make sure to make a sign out of you the foxes tried to fight the Nazarite and they did not win Song of Solomon, chapter 2. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Catch 
the small foxes. Because wherever there is a fox, they will find a vine. I've got to repeat that. Wherever there is a fox, they're not just looking for houses. They're looking for vines, which is why. In Luke chapter 13, there was a vine. And there was a vine that healed. And a vine that delivered. And a vine that stood up for prostitutes. And a vine that said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Watch me. And apart from me, I can get praises here. You can do nothing. And Herod took on the attributes of the fox. He went to find the vine. He tried it when Jesus was little and it did not work because of Anna the prophetess. But now Jesus is healing people. He's on a tour, if you will. He's casting out devils off of people that y'all don't think should be free. He's restoring people that y'all deemed unhealable and unfeelable and unfixable. And Jesus steps out and not only is he healing them, he's healing them on the Sabbath. He's healing them, violating old covenant law. He's healing them and now Herod gets mad at a deliverance ministry. Herod gets mad at a tour of routinely making people emancipated. Jesus was going to take slaves to make them sons and Herod said, I've got to stop him. Now here's why. If he continues to set people free, he's going to replace me. He's walking around here calling himself a king and this city is not big enough for me and him. Kill him because I can't free him and he can't. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever felt like you were the recipient of an attack because of how you loved? The person next to you is a bald-faced liar. I said, I said, have you ever felt like you were being punished by how big your heart was? Have you ever felt like you did the dance of trying to keep a big heart guarded? And so to be comfortable, what happened is you stopped forgiving people as quick as God does. God forgives people a lot faster than you. And so because of the damage to the heart, you started to resent. And I want to say resist the way God made you for your assignment. Many of you under the sound of my voice, you're not quiet because you're tired. You quiet because you've been bit by a fox. Some of you are in love with a fox. Some of you got foxes for your pastor and foxes for your friend. And they've been on assignment to fight the fruit that is on you. I find it interesting that Jesus' reply, I'll dance here, was one that I have now embraced as my own mantra. What he said was not complicated or complex. It was real simple, and I'll reduce it so you get my Sunday school message. Hey, Jesus, get on out of here. Listen, listen to me. I, listen to me. Don't surrender your place to the devil. There's some people in here right now that's received word from demons that the devil wants you out of here. Leave here. When God has called you to a place, your favor is not for your head. It is for the place God told you to be. And there are many people that are straining and struggling, not because they ain't gifted or talented, but they let the devil bully them in their place. When God told Elijah he was going to provide for him he could have sent an uber and did not he told Elijah I have commanded a widow there slap somebody say get there get there open your mouth Zion and tell him get there get there the provision is place sensitive provision is place sensitive the reason it is not just based upon your obedience now is because the favor of God is flowing to those that are following God you just can't make up in your mind that you're going to go where you want to go and expect him to pay for it you got to be found where he told you to be and until he tells you to be somewhere else sit your hips down and get safe in the will of God will you grab somebody that's got 
got natural hair and tell them I'm not going nowhere. I ain't going. Some of you lying, but shake them anywhere. Tell them I'm not going anywhere. I fought to get in this place, prayed to get in this place, suffered to get in this place. I might give you something else, but I'm not letting my place. There is a 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 place. Hey, there is a place. It is not every place, but there is a place. There is a place that is meant to be the platform and the premise for your purpose. You cannot execute and manifest your purpose in every place. There are some people that you're bitter against because you think they don't understand you. But let me help you tonight. Send a message to the fox. Eli was never supposed to see Samuel. He was supposed to be a blind leader because if he saw what was in him, he would have took the credit for how God was going to grow him there are people who misunderstand you by divine design i'm here to tell you you need to stop crying about who didn't support you it's because they couldn't see you but it was not the devil it was your destiny and it was determining what they can see in you shout hallelujah listen thank god for who couldn't see I said thank God for who couldn't see Thank God for who couldn't see Some of you ladies need to shout Because the wrong man didn't see you Some of you brothers need to shout Because the wrong thing didn't see you I'm glad you can't see me Cause in a moment I'm about to be perfected And it's gonna be the glory of Get out of here Get out of here. Get out of here because Herod's going to kill you. Many of us are, and please be seated. Many of us, many of us respond positively to new enemies. But we are oft intimidated by repeat attacks. I find that most people are brave when they got a new fight. But the truth is, when you got a familiar fight, that's quiet until your success. Help me. There are certain things in your heart, in your mind, in your life. That's taking a nap until you reach the next level. When you go to the next level, the next season, and the next place, certain attacks on you are on time release. And many of us, Pastor Barger, they don't worry, many of us make the mistake of thinking that the presence of success means that we are healed. But success does not always mean that our soul is where it needs to be. I love your word. Herod came for him when he was an infant and now he came again when he was in his platform. What is coming back to you? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. Uh, what, what is it that you thought you defeated? What is it that you got discouraged in fighting from that you just kind of left there because you learned how to dance? There is a sleeping thing that's trying to wait until you get relaxed and comfortable and in your preferred place. And many of you are going to lose the victory because you're pursuing your ideal life. It's coming back. Yeah, it's coming back. If you got unfinished business in that soul, sometime new success triggers old pressures. And what you got to realize is if you don't deal with this thing now, it's going to always be coming back, testing where you are in the soul realm. Get out of here. How many of you that are called to restoration have a tendency to run? Borrow a amen if you can't find one. How many of you know you've been called to heal, but when an old thing comes back, when, when, when new people do stuff that reminds you of old people, uh, when new friends start to show tendencies of old friends, when you're trying to make a new covenant, but their personalities are eerily reminiscent of old wounds, how many of us retreat? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus had no retreat in him. Now, I've got to crack into the most important parts of this, but I need your help to help me prophesy. Uh, if you got tongue breath, reach in your pocket and put a mint in because you're going to say what I tell you to say. Look at the person next to you and point your finger in their face and say, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of retreat. Can I give you a word? 
this is your season of no retreat whatever happened hey 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 whatever happens over these next couple of months do anything but run you are not a punk your punk days are done if God calls you to it he's got to help you do it and you got to stop running shout hallelujah Snap three people say stop running stop running come on obey me buckethead tell them stop running stop running you got to stop running i know it feels safe but it's not stop running i know it looks best for you but stop running i know you think and you've been convinced and coerced before that running is easy but running don't change the situation it actually delays you everybody that runs has to make that thing up but i feel in atlanta some grace rising to stay in my place god gave me this place and i'm not running but because Herod got something to say. Tell that fox. Couple things. Tell him, not only am I not running, <laughs> and not only am I not scared by the implication of his threat. And, and, and you can't relate to this because you're thinking about external threats. But if you got something weighty on your life, the most dangerous threats are the internal ones. The thing that gets you in the middle of the night and say, if you keep on preaching, I'll kill you. The thing that sits on you and say, if you continue to lead this people, I'm going to drive you out of your mind. I don't care about your threats. Your threats. Your threats. Here is Jesus' reply. Hey, Christian, we can shout. Jesus' reply was this. Hey, hey, hey. Tell him that fox... Pay attention. I'm going to cast out devils. I'm going to do the same thing that's getting me in trouble. If I weren't casting out devils, you wouldn't be mad at me. So, so I'm not only going to not run, I'm going to do more of what you don't want me to do. If you're in here and you are a runner, the way to break the authority over that thing is do the thing you scared to do. I know you don't like that. With everything within you, you've got to do it afraid. And you've got to do it a lot more. And as you do it more, the yoke of intimidation will be broken off of your life. I'm going to keep on casting out devil. Say what you want to say about the all nations worship assembly. But there'll be very few slaves in the midst of us. I don't care if we get 10,000. Uh, when your pastor was talking about uh, the casting out of devils, uh, I almost ran smooth around here. Because I love the legacy of this great people. Uh, and the legacy of this great people is uh, there is an oil and a power that'll knock the taste out your mouth. Uh, is there anybody in here that came in with one fetter? Came in with one shackle? And the right somebody grabbed your head? Uh, and the thing that should have have been active in you because of your daddy's devils and your mama's decisions was broken by the power of the word of God. You ought to lift your hands and shout for freedom. I'm not perfect, but I ain't doing what I used to do. I cuss a little bit, but I ain't had sex in a long time. I may drink a little bit, but that blood ain't in me. Come on, church. I got a long ways to go, but I'm not bound with what I used to be bound with. I got delivered. I got Hey, hey, I got delivered. I got delivered. I'm still human, but I got delivered. You ought to shout for a deliberate church. You ought to shout because this ain't Candyland Christian Center. We hate the devil just as much as he hates us. Deliverance! Tell him I'm going to keep casting out the devil. I I'm not going to get to 6,000 and get cute church. I'm going to be 10,000 still walking chairs. I'm going to keep casting out devils. And not only am I going to cast out devils, I'm going to perform cures. Because some of you are delivered and just not healed. The devil's gone, but you still got you to fix. So not only do we need deliverance ministries. We need restoration ministries. Those that can walk up to an open wound and close it now. Can I preach like I want to? God is getting ready to give you the gift of closure. There have been open wounds in your life. Stinking and festering. And messing up your dreams. And your self-esteem. And clearing your vision up. But God is about to close some wounds in your life. Hey, slap somebody say close, close. I'm going to deliver people 
and I'm going to heal them. This is where I shout. Essentially, if I'm doing hermeneutic integrity to this text, essentially what Jesus told them was, what I'm doing, here is the message, I will do for the rest of my life. You didn't hear what I said. He, he, he said, listen, I'm going to cast out devils. Then I'll do healings. And then on the third day, I'll be perfected. God is challenging you in this season to commit to what you're supposed to do for the rest of your life. Now, forgive me. I am scholarly. I've had the privilege of matriculating through some pretty impressive institutions. But I'm kind of a church kid, right? And so when I was growing up, uh, the thing that would hit me is when the saints would start talking about for the rest of my life. Uh, and I did not understand that until I started dealing with colored people. And when I got into the church and started pastoring, very often that fox would come up on me as are you sure you don't want to leave this? But I remember the prayers of the saints and grandmothers that would say, for the rest of my life. I guess somebody in here. Why can you say to death do you part to a man or a woman, but can't look at your destiny in the face and say, come what may. Hell, high water, second coming, betrayal. I'm in this for the rest. I can't get help nowhere. For the rest of my life. Hey, for the rest of my life, you're about to lose me in a minute. For the rest of my life, glory to God. I'll retire from you, but not from him. For the rest of my life, I'm going to be a praiser for the rest of my life. I'm going to do deliverance for the rest of my life. I'll promise I'll for the slap somebody say for the rest of Wow! 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 For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I'm going to do this thing as an old man. As an aged man. You will not allow. Watch me. The pressure of my assignment to convert me. Jesus. Deuter. He warns his sons. Matthew 10. I love your word. I'm sending you out. As sheep among wolves but beware of wolves in sheep's clothing Jesus uses animal analogy to teach us about people and their nature he says I want you to be the opposite of them pay attention you're going out as sheep in the middle of wolves they will be wolves that are dressed like sheep what he was saying is, if you don't handle your assignment well, it can change who you are to cope with the hostility of your assignment. Stay a sheep. Don't become a wolf because you're called to them. If you become like them, you have no authority over it. You got to stay a sheep over here. You got to keep your inner man pure. No matter the emotional rigor of the complexities of the thing God called you to do. It's going to hurt. It's going to be painful. Going to be mad. But don't you change what's under here. You got to stay that way. Now, in conclusion, if Herod was a fox and Song of Solomon said small foxes find all vines. That means that if we're going to interpret this to you and I, the areas in your life that produce revelation and the areas of your life that God has been talking to is on schedule for a fox attack. Divine is the wine carrier. Wine is revelation. First miracle in the New Testament is an upgrade from water to wine. From salvation by water to now the Holy Ghost and blood. If there is revelation assigned to your family, prophet of God gives you a word about your calling. It's a dangerous thing to go to sleep and not find the fox. Many of you are so scary you're looking for bears. But bears are not coming for your fruit. It's going to be the small stuff you won't confront. Because small stuff you won't address becomes big things that confront you. Small foxes. 
small foxes. You may call them red flags, but every one of us has areas of productivity in our lives that something gnaws at. I noticed when they were celebrating my birthday, th this is what you say, you didn't show up and you side-eyed it. I noticed when we were getting ready to, to have the meeting, you didn't show up because you wasn't in control. It's a, it's a small... I realize that you're only on the team as long as you're on the lead. Those aren't big bears. Those are small foxes. For where you're going, you've got to say back to Herod what he's trying to say to you. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And I'm very actively investigating foxes. Where are they? They could be in your habits. They could be in your friends. They could be in your conversations. For some of you, it's in your text messages. They don't have to be big, glaring issues. You are not as productive as you should be, probably because of a series of small things that you won't address. The good news is this. You are destined, final word, to be a snake handler. I've learned that there's no way to avoid the appearance of, the bite of, the hissing of snakes. You can't find your way around it. It's called to you. You're called to it. But what Paul's story tells me is that even if they bite, you've got the power to shake it off. What I'm telling you is this. It doesn't matter what, who has poor intention to you poor plan to you Ooh -wee. it doesn't matter what they're saying around you about you uh, 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 it doesn't matter you've been called to handle snakes stop running from them what if they bite me you will live you can recover from a bad breakup you can recover from a bad friendship if you stop underestimating your recovery power you would start to realize you could produce at levels you've never dreamed of. Will you slap the person next to you just once more and again and scream this, recover, tell them that. Oh, no, they didn't receive that. They, they, no, that neighbor hasn't been through anything in their life. Turn around, tell the person behind you, they're a bit more faithful. Slap them and say, recover! May the time it takes you to recover decrease. May you make quick recovery in this next season. May you be more resilient emotionally and may your bounce back power be greater than you've ever imagined. I promise I recovery over you that anything that hurts you will not be longer than 48 hours. You are getting right. I can't get help nowhere. You are going to get back up. Come on, recover, 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 recover. Recover, recover, it's necessary. You can't reap and not recover. When you recover, then you reap. I said recover well. Heal, baby. Heal, son. Recover. I used to run from snakes. I don't anymore. I've actually decided to educate myself by frequenting the zoo. Because all ministry is, is caged animals waiting for somebody to handle them. It's a beautiful thing. But if we're going to, sometime when you've been called to free people, they bite you. Then, if you're going to be in ministry, you also have the complex issue of trying to stop broken people from breaking other people. So now we got to quarantine all y'all to make sure you don't victimize somebody because you don't get the victory in your own life. Predatory behavior in the church. Those that look for the weak and the vulnerable. The head of it be broken in Jesus' name. Very first prophecy in scripture was about a snake. God told a woman, hey, the seed of this man, this woman, is going to crush your head. You know what you're going to be in 2020? A handler of snakes. You will sit in boardrooms with them and not run. 
<laughs> you will buy buildings from them and not run. Yes, sir. Some of you may go in business with them. Yes, sir. Here's the power of snake handling. The more you learn them, the safer you are. Because I know what you are, I'm about to set you free. I no longer waste my expectation trying to get you to change. What I do is once I learn who you are, I change. I adjust because of what you won't address. If it's hissing like a snake, I move out the way. But I'm not running from no reptile. I've got too much stuff to do. Somebody shout if you believe it now. Isaiah says, is this the one that makes the nations tremble? He referred to Lucifer as a worm. <laughs> this is the guy that makes the nations tremble. That means he only comes up when and where there's rain. The prophetic word to you. Find them foxes. Do not wait until you have an unregulated, uncontrollable bear of an issue in you or around you. Kill it at the fox level. Because if you don't kill it at the fox level, you look up and you have no fruit on your vine. Now, for many of you, it's a warning. For some of you, it's confirmation. And uh, for those of you that remember not being able to recover from a snake bite or to shout because I just told you you got life insurance it may bite you again I don't know but I guarantee you you're going to live through it say prove it say prove it you have literally not symbolically not theoretically not even parenthetically <laughs> you have literally lived through everything you've ever been through uh, you, you didn't get that. You... I'm going over here. <laughs> I said you have literally lived through 100% of everything you've ever been through. Here's how the Bible says it. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I can't hear. But I can't hear you. But the Lord delivered them. Homelessness, divorce, disease, abuse, scandalion, accusation. You've lived through 100% of it. Now, most of you are not grateful because you think God owes you air. I want to hear the shout of those that's just grateful for the air in their lungs real quick. Now, not that praise the other way. If you've lived through a nervous breakdown, hey. If you live through eviction, if you live through attack, go ahead, just let the man know you're grateful. If you act grateful, you may find some favor tomorrow. I cried to the Lord, and he delivered. I, can, I said he delivered. I can hear you. He delivered. I didn't know I was going to be it, but he delivered me. Could have had his way with you if he would have been able to do with you what he wanted to do with you it would have been a much different way now we're looking at you and not viewing you because the hand of God stopped the power and the request of death because there were still things in you that you needed to fulfill tell that fox Tell that fuck. Tell that fuck. I'm not going to die. I just got started. I'm going to cast out devils, heal the sick, and on the third day, I'll be perfected. Jesus said, hey, stop preaching that folk murdered me. I was not murdered. 
Nobody takes my life. I simply laid the sucker down. I'm here to tell you, you serve a life giver. And whom the Son makes free, it's free. I want to hear the delivered praiser. No, the delivered do it better. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Everybody that made it out of a soul time. Everybody that made it out of domestic violence. some foul glory to God my message to the fox do what you're gonna do I'm gonna do this for the rest of my life now a voice just told me in my head run clean down this aisle and mother pain as many rows as possible because there's no way in the world I deserve anything he's ever done. This is why I've learned to test the praise levels of people around me. Because if you steal the glory from him, you'll take money from me. So I watch people who act like they did it on their own. And I don't know about you, but all of us were not easy to deliver. Woo, woo, glory, glory. Some of us were a little deeper than other people. And the parts of your story that we know, you gave us the G version of it. Some of you gave some PG-13. I want everybody in here with an X-rated story. Everybody in here that was sinking deep in sin. Everybody in here that was left for dead. Everybody in here that wanted to do it your own way. Hey, in your own strength. With your own power. Shout. Because the hand of God. I shut the hand of God. I was a hard case. Glory. Hey, glory, glory. This church, this church, this church was assigned to those that were dead on arrival. The first year of this church, we were calling ourselves grave robbers. We were not looking for the living. We were looking for the dead. Here it is on the third day. We are looking at a bunch of resurrected lives, resurrected dreams, resurrected businesses, resurrected gifts, and that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is about to quicken your morning body. How much you act if I told you he's going to do it again? He, I said he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. That's the sound of a flashback right there. Hey! That's the sound of a recollection right there. I know that place. That was it. Woo! That almost went back. Come on, praise him right there. I said, let the people praise him. God is. <laughs> oh yes oh yes come 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 you're welcome here come 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 <laughs> come 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 you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome
do it your way come now we need you Woo! we need you spirit of god come now come now come come thou art welcome 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 you're welcome here come come there is there is there is an altar my assignment tonight was to reconnect you with the permanence of your calling the thing that you're supposed to do for the rest of your life the Lord told me tonight he wanted to confront the foxes that make you continually offer up resignation to the thing you're called to do tonight he wants a new altar uh -huh. and the thing he wants is your permanence if I sit you on this altar and you become my sacrifice will you move or will you let me cut and sue you what the Lord is doing is going to be life encompassing for most of you when a mantle hits your life it does not cloak some stuff it falls on your total existence God has been trying to get a lot of you to come all the way under what's resting on your life and to stop quitting every time you find resistance every time somebody threatens you every time it looks like you won't get to marry who you want to move where you want every time it looks like you're going to have to fight to keep people around you for the right reason yes your assignment may decide what pain you experience but if you stop running from pain, at some point it's going to prosper you. Throw their hands up now. The word was for the praiser, but the impartation is for the surrender. It's for the surrender. It's for the surrender. Throw them hands up. It's just a demon. Don't be distracted. Throw them hands up. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to deal with you very directly about what he wants out of you forever. Now that's a word that we don't often like to say, but tonight one-on-one -on -one, what God wants out of you is a forever commitment. Your purpose is not a season. <laughs> There's some things God wants out of you, say forever. There's some commitments God wants. And I also feel like there's some permanent changes God wants to make to your personality, to how you see yourself, to what you want in purpose. There's some changes He wants to make that He's not going to reverse for social sake forever. While your hands are lifted, I want you thinking about it, and we're going to worship. I want you to consider the thing that can make you walk out of your purpose and idol. The factor, the audience, the happening, the event that's strong enough to pull you out of your place. God's killing your contingency plan tonight. I'll do this forever. And I, I want you sober in this. That's what he wants to do. For very many of you, I feel like the Holy Ghost is saying, don't push me any further if you're not going. Ask for nothing more if you're not going all the way. He's trying to get you all the way. Throw them hands up. Come on. The level of restoration that's about to move in this room is going to feel like a deep ocean, a deep ocean. A very deep ocean. Throw them hands up, Father. Come on, Tim, push me there. Father, tonight, your people lift every broken piece. We lift every fractured piece. We lift every sensitive piece. We lift every fear, every hesitation. We lift every worry. We lift every anxiety.
desire it. We lift every attack, every accusation. We lift every fear, every torment. We lift every threat internally and externally. We lift up the fear of risk. We lift up the fear of death. We lift the fear of loss to you. And tonight will you receive it as a fragrant burning. Father, forgive those of us that have not settled in our call and settled in our assignment. Forgive us for not unpacking our bags. And right here and right now, before heaven and earth, we surrender our complete self, our complete self. And we say we're not leaving. We're not going anywhere. We have no plans to vacate. Our hearts are awake. Your love is like a flame. Set us on fire again and give us the passion. Give us the zeal. Give us the focus that comes from following you wholeheartedly. We release right now the word of the Lord to our own hearts. Say our hearts are steadfast. Stabilize your steady, steady. We want steady hearts. We want stable hearts that can be used as the steering wheel of the Spirit of God in the direction of our destiny. Our lives are yours. Our fears are yours. Money is yours. Children yours. Spouse is yours. Desire is yours. Appetite's yours. Skill is yours. Gifts are yours. Our visions are yours. Our gifts, our ideals. It's all yours. It belongs to you. And we withhold nothing. Come on, lift up some worship right there. If you mean that, lift up some worship. If you mean that, lift up some worship. Forever. Hey, forever. Forever. Come on, lift it up. Forever. That is our prayer tonight. Forever. That's our desire tonight. Forever. We want to do this as all men and women. Forever. We want to say like David. I was young, but I am now old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I'm in this for the long run. Forever. 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 Come what may. Forever. of endurance to Atalis. Those of you that have been experiencing purpose fatigue. Shoo. 
There is an endurance. Come on, walk in it. There, hey, hey, hey. Atala rosteha, mishe bahada la latadi atade, la 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 la, di la naha, delegos batoro. If I may add that I no scoop on a tarry, the six papa man pela tara, Aradaga, the Andorre negoste by. There is an endurance coming upon you. I said, Hey, there is an endurance coming upon you. There is a brand new stamina coming alive in you. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Ah, come on. The warfare is over your obedience. Ashkeba. Oh. Atadahale. Ro the asuka mahando lane. New endurance all over this building. New endurance for every intercessor. For every prophet, every evangelist, every leader. That new endurance. You've been fighting and contending for new ideas. What you need is new endurance. You need to wax strong under this grace. the angels of the Lord are moving very strong I'm, I'm lift your hands back here especially in the name of Jesus father I, I father the powers of anxiety I, I saw a huge angel just walk down that aisle right now you're gonna feel the fire of God right now the power of anxiety and sleeplessness I see insomnia leaving now in Jesus name the power of God the power of God there you go get behind them they're falling move now I see them move now you are see hey 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 come on we're in the move of God all insomnia all panic attacks something is hitting this place right now all sleeplessness nightmares nightmares terrors, even the powers of incubus and succubus, be broken tonight in the strong name of the Lamb, the Lamb's agenda, 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 the Lamb, oh, so, come on, there's a portal, something's opening back there, come on, jump in, now, power, come on, get behind, now, help, Jesus, move, power, Stand behind him. God's going to heal your body completely. Fire on you totally in Jesus' name. Come on, he's doing it right now. He's moving right now. Come on, he's moving right now. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. Everything operating in you genetically that's been living in rebellion to the purpose of God. I command your complete body from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Align yourself now. Align yourself with the purpose of God, the assignment of God, the destiny of God. A lump, a lump just got cured back there, right there. There's a woman with a lump. God's burning it right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, unusual activity of the Spirit. Bizarre activity of the Spirit. Stir the river, stir the river. Stir the river, stir the river. Stir the river. Alignment in your body. Alignment in your mind. Your emotions align tonight. Ah. Sweetheart, wipe your face. Stand up. Channing, when you go over there. Prayer of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, huh? Put your hand on our hair real quick. The enemy is trying to attack you with emotional PTSD. The trauma of what you just lived through. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I command the memory of it, the image of it, to be burned out of your mind right now. Serpents and scorpions, go! It, there it goes now. There it goes now. Come on, don't just look great. It goes now. All of the trauma and every contract of death operating in you. Every contract of death. Every vow. Every vow. The devil's trying to push you out of your place. But tonight, your roots go deep. Your roots go deep. Come on, look up a shout all over this building. Come on, look up a shout. Scream forever. Scream forever.
God's about to ask you to do something that's going to be the hardest thing you've had to do in your life. There's a brand new assignment coming on you and initially you're not going to want to do it. God's asking for a new offering out of you, a transition that's going to have so many questions around why you have to do what you have to do. But this next move, this next commitment is for your own sanity and it's for your own safety. The only reason you've not done this is to protect the stability of those around you that need you. God's about to change your assignment and deepen it to take care of you. You and him got some unfinished business. And he's about to put you in some safe quarantining to repair the broken thing. The broken thing. And he wants to repair the broken thing because the call on your life is healing. The assignment on your life is restoration. And not just common restoration, but unusual restoration. Something follows you, yes, from another state, but the Spirit of God is breaking the trail of accusation that came from that place to this. In the name of Jesus. And look at me, son. The Lord wants you to know. Come here. Don't touch your head. 17 years of self-hatred is leaving your life tonight. You spirit of condemnation. I loose the whoo, I loose the fiery love of God to this heart, this story, this assignment now. Now I command the whisperings of the accuser to leave his ear now. You go free in your hearing and I command the captivity of this ear to be broken now. Now you spirit assigned to his desire, I judge you right now in Jesus name. It's just a big bad wolf but it's not going to blow your house down. We cancel the assignment over your life and your future in Jesus name come on lift up a shout to the Lord all over this the word of the Lord say obey me obey me tonight the spirit of God is pulling you out of contemplation because your contemplation is in the way of your concentration you are distracted because you've been disobedient but the Lord says obey me and I will deal with that provisional issue that's held you hostage there is not just a housing issue, there is a money issue that's got you captive. And God says if you will break the power, what I, I don't know anything, but I'm going to tell you what I just heard. That contract is not your calling. God's breaking the power of a controlling contract. He's moving you in the grace you need for your own sanity. Your soul is crying for a safe place. And if you obey the Lord, he will restore unto you years. Uh, and the Lord, um, there is a battle in your heart for the endorsement of a father. A competition over the, 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 the applause, the approval. God's going to settle your heart in this and a new affirmation from heaven is coming to your life such as you've never seen before. But the Lord's requiring all relationships of you to walk away, to recommit, to clean relationships. Praise the name of the Lord. And, yeah, let me leave. Lift your hands up. The yes is not as deep is where it needs to be and the surrender not as strong as what he wants it but you stand on the brink and you stand on the precipice of some of the greatest favor of your born life and the frustration that you felt even the ceiling over your career is about to shatter but God's been waiting on you to throw yourself fully into his training uh, your enrollment into his will and purpose 
not just for your personal ministry and call but for there is a fear concerning God's call on your family your house God be praised but God is God is settling this issue in your heart of protection if I venture if I go is it safe out there and the Lord wants you to know son like Peter walk on these waters it's safe over here in the name of Jesus now your rest and your sleep is going to be different than it's ever been in your life in the name there the peace of God there go. the peace of God the peace of God come on let it stand up in you the peace of God come on take it every ounce of it in Jesus name will you lift up a shout to the Lord in this place There is at the back you. Yeah. Don't be afraid. There is a tormenting spirit that's been assigned to your psychological self. Something that works to bully you all the time and reduce you at your core. But God's going to heal your life so beautifully that the areas in your life that have been attacked, namely your study and your study disciplines, your schooling and your advancement there, God's going to heal you to give you the endurance to endure hard sayings and it won't break you like it did before. It won't harm you like it did before. Now the Lord shows me where you walk through a time where several folk walked away and the Spirit of God is letting you know that those that walked away probably were dangerous for your emotional health but there are new guards I hear the scripture he sets the lonely in families and what God is about to do is garrison you and make it safe for you to pursue him father will you introduce yourself in a deeper way a stronger way a beautiful way in that life in Jesus name put those hands together for the Lord uh, uh, not Dre behind you come here You are like that runner. You're contemplating running right this instance. Right now you are. There is a running agenda, a running assignment, a running temptation. And the truth is, you're afraid to put one version of your life plan to death. God's not been punishing you. He's been trying to crucify you. But you won't stay down long enough for him to nail it. If you exchange your dream for his, not only will what in, what's in his hand be much more worth it, but he's going to redeem what you feel like slipped through your hands. Father, will you restore the parts of this story that we don't know about? Will you blow in the parts of this narrative that only you see? help him to stop running and to stabilize himself in the purpose of God for his life. Put those hands together for the Lord. A uh, hat. Yeah, come here, man. I think I'm done. God wants a forever kind of commitment. There is a type of a grace that's about to come upon your life for hard ministry. Hard ministry. And the enemy has been trying to convince you out because you don't think you know enough, you don't think you have enough support. You don't think you've been taught at the level you should be. And so what you've done is you've disqualified yourself from the, all the, the, the consistent tugging of the Spirit of God at this gift. Yeah. But the Lord wants you to know it's not yours, it's His. Now stir the gift of God there. Let the gift of God be stirred in this Timothy. Thousands upon thousands. Thousands of a campus upon campus. Stir this gift now. Fire on it totally in Jesus' name. Consume this desire. And put this broken heart back together. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. If you believe that he's near to the broken hearted. If you believe that he's near to the broken hearted. Lift up the praise all over this world. I think I'm done, but I feel led. Oh, I feel led. Uh, this is very unusual. 
what I'm hearing in my spirit is there are a lot of you uh, who were the, I don't want to say victims, who've not found your rhythm after a painful divorce. And what the Lord is showing me is that there is destiny after divorce. That divorce does not have to be the end of your story, the end of your statement. Lift your hands up all over this building. If you are one of these people that have suffered from a painful divorce, a brutal divorce, throw them hands up. We're going to make prayer teams around you. Don't be ashamed. It's a real death. Put them hands up. If you are around this people, that person, make a look quick circle real quick. circle we're going to begin now listen if you've never experienced a divorce it literally feels like a death a literal death something that has to be born <laughs> what I'm believing God to do is reveal the assignment of God that comes after this phase of your life and your ministry the new information the new instruction come on open your heart I'm going to pray, but I want you to begin to pray for them. If you're dealing with, if you're praying for somebody of the same gender, gracefully put your hand on them, either their shoulder or something like that. Come on. I'm going to pray. In the name of Jesus, every stigma, every bruise, every label assigned to these people, these men and women that have gone through excruciating relationship changes. In the name of Jesus, I command the memories, the anguish, the pain of these moments to be reversed in Jesus Christ's strong name. Let there be a brand new oil of restoration, of hope, of courage, of confidence, and even a sense of a calling. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything trying to operate against their confidence against their courage against their bravery you spirit of bitterness wherever you are operating we command you from the root to be pulled out of these hearts these hearts are reserved for the wisdom of God the instruction of God the purposes of God the peace of God the way of God in the name of Jesus Christ and let the roots of bitterness that have taken root in any heart in here be pulled up now in Jesus strong name now let this heart be open for fresh assignments for fresh wisdom for new direction for brand new clarity for insight for confirmation and understanding let the window the gate and the door be opened over every life that's been impacted by a brutal divorce and separation in the name of Jesus now we declare you healed we declare you filled we declare you whole, we declare you wise, we declare you strong, and we release you into the greatest season of your life. Come on, if you believe that, give the Lord a shout all over this room. I said, if you believe that, give God some glory. Come on, give Him some glory. Come on, give Him some glory. Give Him some glory. the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, I will restore. If you believe it, shout hallelujah.
began to pray, something like an oil started coming out my head. And the Lord told me, tonight when you go there, pray that their eyes are open with sound. Something like scales fall off. That you move into new vision, not not a season, a fresh vision for every area of your life. Sometimes when you have undealt with damage, it prevents you from seeing as well as you should. But I declare over you brand new vision. For every facet of who you are, a new clarity, a new insight, a new bravery, a new specificity. And I say that this is the hour in your life when you're coming out of the trap of ambiguity into a place of very specific and very sure stepping. He enlarges under you the steps that you take and this time there won't be no booby traps there. If you believe in God to do that in you, starting 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, I want you to give God praise by faith for some fresh vision. I declared on this whole first row, fresh vision. Let it happen over here, fresh vision. You will go to work tomorrow with a problem you could not figure out. And an epiphany will come to you. You'll have the solution fresh. Hey, fresh. Fresh. Brand new. This is going to hit you. The sun will come. Things that were locked up wouldn't let you in. The solution be revealed. The answer be revealed. Scream fresh. Y'all come here. And then I'm done. Naturally, um, I'm going to pray for it. I believe God can reduce the timelines on this building project. I believe God. There is a, uh, all nations Atlanta, listen to me. There is a timeliness, a kairos essence upon the next moves of this couple. Mm, mm, mm. And there it is an urgency that this thing not take longer than what it should. It has to be an issue that's closed. It cannot be elongated. You intercessors who hear, hear well. Your job and your assignment in the spirit is to deal with any second heaven activity trying to eat longer he can't stop it but what i feel like the enemy is trying to do is stretch it out longer than what it should be tonight we're going to pray that the god who holds time reduces it and that whatever they're saying in these meetings about it you know un, uh, uh, surprise monkey wrenches and all of this stuff god's going to change the conversation tonight and the level of stress that you've been under because of this building project the, the level of sleeplessness the level of mental anxiety and fatigue concerning this building project is done tonight in the name of Jesus Tim, that's, give me, take me out of the sleepy time in the name of Jesus anything trying to uh, 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 reduce your cerebral faculty you that you've not felt as, as as clear as you need to be anything working around you we loose the fire of God to the foxes tonight uh, in that bank in them construction meetings every fox trying to break down this assignment of God be judged tonight and I command the spirit of peace I set the spirit of peace over your heart and your mind. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. I want you, if you go here and there, shout like that thing is done. Reduce the time. We want you to reduce the time. If we found favor in your sight, reduce that time. I believe that. How many believe that? I believe that. Hey, hey, I believe that. I believe that. And I'm 
I'm a strong believer that if it happens on the head, it happens on your house. I prophesy shortened projects in your life. Things that used to take elongated, you will no longer waste your energy. Been going into projects, ideas. Nothing is going to take as long as it used to. The shift in your life is hitting this year in Jesus name I declare that you're not wasting time who in writer's block you're not wasting time in elongated closings for homes you're not wasting time the time is ready to shrink will you shout I receive that going to be favor for a natural home. You're coming to the end of your time in the one you have. God's about to give you the type of space, the type of what seems like some to be luxury because the time of the Timothy is upon you. And there's going to be those that spend time in your basement, those that spend time in your movie theater and all of that find the answers to destiny don't get comfortable in this house it ain't it but there is a healing home a home that carries the anointing this thing is on you so strong it fills the buildings that belong to you now any hesitation regarding the purchase of property any inherited fear concerning real estate acquisition tonight I cancel it in the name of Jesus and I, I charge you to buy as much as you can in Jesus name the favor of God come upon you in power and God raises up those to bless you just because in the name of Jesus your progenitors your sponsors your investors are in route now in the name of Jesus I'm talking about they're already on the way those that have been a hey, those that have been anointed to bless you with no strings attached they are all Scream if you believe it. Go crazy like a fool. Scream if you believe it. I said scream if you believe it. Scream, Teddy. The house is coming to you. It's coming. Scream if you believe it. Out the way now. honored in the last season by those that have less than you in the next season you will be blessed by those that have more than you your name is in rooms that your body has not gone into and the credibility of your character has been conversed about by very very powerful people I command the camels to come now in the name of Jesus you've been fighting for your freedom and your deliverance now it's time to prosper I said it's time to prosper for the set time to favor her I said the set time to favor her is here come on give the Lord the glory right Quotavius, I see property for you too. Now, I don't, hey, 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 I'm sorry. I don't know this part. How? Oh, glory. I'm, I'm, oh, Lord. I don't know this part of your story. I, I want everybody in here that's ever been homeless, ever been evicted, give God like 20 seconds. 
because your new name is landlord. I, not that crazy other one. I said landlord. Call me landlord. Call me landlord. I'm looking at people, hey, I'm looking at people that used to live in their cars, people that had studio apartments, and you've never had the bravery, the relationships. I'm crazy enough, call me what you want. I believe that by the time we get to the end of this year, every member of all nations worship assembly can own at least one something. Now you ain't got a tweet with me. I don't care if it's a condo or half of an acre. By the time you get to December the 31st at 1158, God's gonna hand over, if you believe it, one, two, three, stop. Make this decree, and if it hits you in the right place, act a fool. Together, we're gonna loose this hay into this season. The name of the decree is no more rent, okay? When I count to three, we gonna say it with everything in us, and everybody that receives it go crazy. Are you ready? One. Two, I feel this thing. Three, come on. No! Now go crazy!